zijn we Tech Day, dag 2. We hebben een interview met John Craddock van XT Seminars. John gaat vandaag een aantal sessies houden. John is een Engelsman, dus we gaan het Engels doen. John, welkom. Thank you. Yes. You're going to speak today? I'm speaking a couple of times today, a yes. A couple of times, even. Okay. And you're going to speak about identity in Azure? Um, yes, pretty much so. I mean, my, my first session is looking at the uh, authentication met methods for on-premise users. So when we take a user from our on-premises AD and we put them into a zero AD, mm -hmm. how does that user actually authenticate? And um, at Ignite a couple of weeks ago, uh, two, two uh, items went uh, GA. So it became generally available, which is the uh, pass-through authentication mechanism and also seamless single sign-on. So there's always been this choice is if I'm going to authenticate my on-premise users, do I use ADFS? Do I use the badly named password synchronization? Um, or do I actually um, decide on something else completely, maybe a third party option. Well, now with pass through authentication and seamless single sign-on, um, you've got another couple of routes to go. Okay, and which one do you think is gonna be the most popular one? Is that the seamless single sign-on or? Well, it's, it's but and seamless single sign-on is gives you the single sign-on method. Yeah. You've still got to choose the authentication method. Um, I mean, if you if you look back historically, the a lot of times people went for using on-premises ADFS, and if you use on-premise ADFS, you've got quite a lot of infrastructure to manage. Uh, if you've got remote workers, uh, you've got to make sure that that ADFS is available, even if the corporate internet link goes down, yes. because you know you, you've got a whole bunch of sort of remote workers that could be working very efficiently, maybe using Office 365 in the cloud. And if the corporate network went down, if you're using on-prem ADFS to authenticate users, they can no longer authenticate. Yeah, have so we have a redundancy, so then you deploy ADFS in the cloud as well. And you know, maintaining all of that becomes a bit of a nightmare. Um, however, a lot of people went down the ADFS route because your chief security officer says no way and my password's being synchronized to a zero AD. All right, so um, that was one driver. And secondly, people liked the fact that you could have um, seamless single sign-on. So, you know, if you are signing into something in the Azure cloud, you'd be redirected to your on-premise ADFS server and provided the user was connected to the corporate network, their credentials could be passed straight through to the on-prem ADFS server. A little bit more complicated than that as you pass a Kerberos token, but um, uh, you effectively had single sign-on. Now, both of those issues have been addressed with uh, pass-through authentication. So pass-through authentication, we're actually gathering the user credentials in the cloud and we're passing them down through a secure channel to on-prem AD and verifying the credentials against on-prem AD. So nothing is leaving on-prem AD in terms of passwords. Okay. So that gets around round one problem and then add on seamless, seamless single sign-on and we get the single sign-on effect as well. But are are we seeing you the trend that people are moving their on-prem AD to the cloud, that they are uh, stopping using their own AD because it's easier to, to manage it in the cloud. Microsoft is pushing it to have it in the cloud. Eh? The Office 365 sub subscriptions are going to change a bit into the Microsoft 365, where, where they get the, 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 the AD included with a couple of other items. Well, I mean, it, for, for an awful lot of um, organizations, they've got their on-prem AD mm -hmm. infrastructure and they will still want to stick with it. So they'll want to have domain join devices which are domain joins, their on-prem AD, so they can do the, the management of those through group policy. They've got their own servers that their users need to access and, and therefore they will still want to authenticate against their on-prem AD. But those users equally well will want to use or will want to provision cloud services to them. So there, therefore you end up with a on-prem AD identity and then you end up with an Azure AD identity. And what you'd like to do is make those effectively the same. So you have a single sign-on, you log into your corporate network, and then you have seamless single sign-on to 
all of the cloud services that are brokered out through Azure AD. I understand the extension because then you, uh, when the corporate network goes down, you still have the Azure AD to authenticate with. Well, you can still do that, but you're authenticating for the cloud services. You know, if you want to, but but by placing uh, the authentication mechanism using ADFS on prem, we're still totally reliant for the cloud services to do an on prem authentication. But you're not seeing the movement that people are moving the complete AD to the Azure cloud. Um, I'm seeing that for new organizations. I've, I've worked with uh, a number of new startups and they go, why do we need on-prem yeah. AD? We don't. And so what they're using is they're using Windows 10 devices, which are Azure AD joined, mm -hmm. and then they can log into their, uh, you know, their Windows 10 device using an Azure AD identity. So they're cloud-only users. And the advantage of that, of course, is that they've got access to all of the you know, SaaS apps. And it's not only SaaS apps within Azure AD, it's SaaS apps across a whole spectrum of third parties as well. Yeah, there are a lot of third, third parties that can connect with, with the Azure yeah. AD. So yeah. that's very helpful. Um, are you going to speak about something else today, or is it mainly about Azure AD. It's mainly about Azure AD. So I'm gonna, my first session is about single sign-on. The second session is what I've called is authentication without boundaries. Okay. So, so authentication has always been sort of in this nice, cozy environment of on-prem AD. But now, of course, we can stretch out across um, all boundaries. And the authentication itself becomes the, the boundary. So our security boundary is authentication. So we can authenticate to on-prem AD, we can authenticate to zero AD, we can equally authenticate to uh, third-party identity providers, and then we can bring in um, users from other identity providers, from other Azure AD tenants using B2B process. And then finally, if we want to bring our consumers in, uh, we can bring them in through Azure B2C. Very much specifying that it's more secure now than ever. Um, the secure link between the Azure AD and the on-prem uh, AD is that uh, that is encrypted. Can you tell me something about the encryption that's being used? Or oh, in terms of so so we we've got the the, the everything is running through secure channels. So as as a minimum, you've got HTTPS, right? So as, as your security is an absolute minimum, um, any, any traffic is originated on-prem and connecting through to Azure AD. So you don't need to open any firewall ports or anything, it just it goes from on-prem out to Azure AD. And depending on what you're doing, the level of security changes. So for instance, let's, let's take the new pass-through pass authentication. So with password authentication, we're gathering the user's name and their password in the cloud. So that's going in through a Microsoft authentication page of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know about that user because they've been synchronized from on-prem. So we now know that for that user, pass-through authentication is enabled. So the, the next thing that happens is we take a, uh, we're using a key which is uh, when, well, when we, when we set up pass-through authentication, what's actually happening is the on-prem authentication agent makes a request for a certificate to Azure AD. So what happens now is we have a private key on-prem and we have a public key uh, associated with that certificate in the cloud. So now the user puts in their password, it's encrypted with the cloud key, which is the public key, the only person that can decrypt that is the on-prem authentication agent. So we've got that level of encryption. It's also going in through Azure Service Bus. And again, we've got keys that control access to the Azure Service Bus. And then the whole thing is sitting inside an HTTPS tunnel. So security-wise, we're, we're pretty well protected. Okay. And uh, how was it before then? Before pass-through? Because well, before, before we had pass-through authentication, you, you had two options. You used password synchronization, which was very, very badly named by Microsoft. Um, in the days they introduced password synchronization, 
uh, a lot of companies thought, ah, they're capturing the clear text password and synchronizing it to the cloud. The reality is totally different. What actually happens is, in, on your on-prem AD, your password is actually stored as an MD4 hash. So that MD4 hash is taken before it leaves on-prem. It's actually, it's salted, well, it's expanded, it's salted. Having salted it, it's then put through a thousand iterations of HMAC SHA-256. So, and then it's synchronized up to the Azure AD. It wasn't that bad. So actually, I, I, well, number one, because it's salted, even if Microsoft lost their password database, which is highly unlikely, because the security around the data centers and everything else mm -hmm. is, is really, really good. But let's say they lost all those hashes in the cloud. Because they're, they're salted, rainbow table attacks are useless. And then because they've gone through a thousand iterations of HMAC SHA-256, the computational time to do a brute force attack on them is, is out, really out of the question. So there you go, someone's stolen the password hash synchronization in the cloud, and the answer so, is so what? It really can't, it can't be you. The only thing you could do is computationally, you could brute force attack it, and depending on the strength of your on-prem password, you might get there very unlikely before passwords have gone through their aging process. But the whole process now with pass two is just much better because you're using certificates. Um, and they use a better encryption. Well, it's a, it's a totally different technology. Yeah. So with, with, um, with, with, the, the part, the, with the hash synchronization, you're actually authenticating the user against a password that is held in Azure AD. With pass-through authentication, you're gathering the user's name, their password, you're then encrypting the password and passing it down to on-premise AD, and the AuthN agent on-prem will actually attempt an authentication against your on-prem AD. And if that's successful, it can then pass through the success. If it's not successful, because maybe the account's locked out, it can also pass that event back to a zero AD. So, very different technologies. Should you use pass-through authentication? Should you use password hash synchronization? Password hash synchronization is the simplest, but if your, your chief security officer says, no way am I password going up into a zero AD, you could use pass-through authentication. Okay. Thank you very much for the interview, John. Okay, Have my pleasure. Okay, thanks.